Welcome to the Cyber Sensei at LearnTheSword.com. This tutorial demonstrates a reverse draw and a diagonal cut followed by a reverse sheathing method to promote dexterity. I will execute a reverse draw transitioning up to a hostile position and executing a right downward diagonal cut. Upon completion, I will rotate and re-grip the handle to begin the sheathing process that melds three separate sheathing patterns you've learned earlier into one that is challenging to learn. Let me demonstrate it again. Practice these theatrical patterns until you can proficiently draw a cut and sheathe the sword smoothly. If you want to view the complete tutorial, join us at LearnTheSword.com. Let's begin with a wooden bokuto to learn the basic footprint. Lifting the sword upward to your hip, I want you to create a triangle in the center, grasping with your right hand. But just not a regular grip. I want you to come in with your hand and reverse the grip. So when you do draw the sword, you will bring it out and upward, bring it counterclockwise back towards you, grabbing it with your left hand, thus bringing it up to your hostile position. Of course, there are other positions you can bring it up to. This reverse draw covers most any angle you want to draw a sword and then execute a cut. But in this uh, tutorial, we're going to be working off of our hasso area here. After you've brought the sword up and you've established your pattern here, I want you to make sure that your elbows are closer together. If your elbows are far apart or they're not into your chest area, area, your cuts will not be that consistent. Execute a migi kesegiri, which is a right downward diagonal cut, down to about this, where the sword point, the sword tip points at say your knee level or your opponent's knee level. From here, after I've executed this, I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to let go with my left, I'm going to rotate the sword counterclockwise about 130 degrees basically here and then re-grip the sword with my left hand. Upon completion of this, I'm going to loosen my hand and then rotate it around, flipping this over and rotating my left hand and my right, this way bringing the sword down to my hip. This theatrical sheathing pattern and of course the cuts and everything that goes with it will help promote dexterity in your sheathing abilities. And the reason why we want to work on this is just sheathing and drawing the sword over and over and over isn't that exciting for many students. Let me demonstrate it one more time. Reverse up to hasso, make the cut, reverse grip, Regrip, bring it around, and onto your hip and back down. Let's continue on with a shinken or a sharp sword so we can learn the finer points. With sword at your side, hands at your side, I want you to lift, bending your arms at your elbows, grasping the sword in the center, creating a good triangle. From this area here, I want you to make so sure that your sword is situated a little bit more up on your hip and it's easier to get a hold of. And at this time, just lift it and adjust it. You'll need to do that. After you've adjusted the sword, I want you to come in here with a reverse grip, move in, Start drawing the sword until it gets out about right here. And you notice that your arm doesn't go out too far. Well, there's a couple of secrets and tricks I want you to work on. So instead of trying to pull the sword all the way out here and overextending it, I want you to make sure the sheath is back farther. There, I pushed the sheath back probably about that far. 
Now, when I draw the sword a little bit more, I have a little bit more energy to go with. But the secret is, is not drawing it strong. It's just, look at my fingers. I'm gonna hold it with two fingers here. I want you to look at this. See the two fingers? I'm gonna pull it out and just let it drop. Just like that. That allows the short sword to clear the sheath without scoring the inside of the sheath or going at an angle that doesn't really work. Watch this again now, since you can see how this is done. I take the sword, I draw the sword reverse, let it drop, and from that dropping point going down, it begins the momentum to bring the circle upwards. So if you watch it again, you can see that Pulling the sword out, drawing the sword, and letting it drop begins the momentum, and I can easily rotate it up to my hostile position here. Executing the cut isn't that difficult, but to be consistent, make sure your forearms are together in this hostile position so you can easily cast out and execute good, strong, consistent cuts. When you are finished with your cut and you want to go into the sheathing process, let go with your left hand, rotate the handle, and re-grip. After you've re-gripped the handle, look where my hands are. They're sort of crossing each other. So one's going to pull down, and one's going to readjust the hand this way while you're pushing your hands around. This teaches you to keep your hands on the handle and basically play it like a flute. You know, you don't want to see a lot of air between the handle and your fingers. Just imagine if this is a flute, you'd have to keep your fingers on the holes. So you don't lift your fingers up too high when you play. You want to keep them low and tight so the melody and the tune sounds a lot better. Same thing with the sword. I want you to keep your fingers loose, but being able to move without telegraphing your thoughts or your intentions. Again, let's go back and look at the sheathing manner. After I've drawn the sword, I've rotated it up, I've made the cut, and I've began the turning, re-gripping, and turning process again back this way. And then I sheathe the sword. Watch it again. Up, cut, reverse sheath, back that way. Continue practicing this theatrical pattern over and over, and then you'll be able to apply it to different cuts and different areas. Try it. It's interesting, and it keeps you from getting Alzheimer's because you really have to think about it and work your mind to be consistent.